Hello everyone, this is Annie from Smart Herd. In the last video series, we had learned about the Android Material Design Animation. In this video, we will be learning about the Material Design Support Library features that we are provided with. In this particular video, we will be learning about floating labels for edit text. What floating label for edit text is? We will learn about setting up the floating label its validation or so to say to validate the input that is provided in the edit text and a few attributes for customizing the floating label and the edit text. But before proceeding, let's see what exactly floating label is. Floating label is the combination of text input layout and the edit text. Before the introduction of the concept of floating labels, when we used edit text for the input, we were just provided with a hint with the edit text. There was no presence of any kind of label. So in edit text, the hint was used as label. With the introduction of the floating label in Android material design, the text input layout was introduced. This text input layout provides us with few advanced features for the edit text. The text input layout wraps the edit text or we can say the edit text is the child view of the text input layout. As I already said, the edit text is provided with hint. But with the text input layout, when the user starts inputting the text, the hint is removed like it was in the edit text and then comes a floating label above the edit text. This is the feature that the text input layout provide us with. The text input layout also provide us with the default feature of field validation. We don't need any third party library for the display of the error. We have the default attribute provided with the text input layout of set error enabled as true or false. When it is set to true, the error will be displayed and the validation will be carried out. When it is set to false, there will be no input validation. On the left side of the screen, we can see the demo application that we will be creating in this video. This is the example for the floating label for the edit text. We can see there are three text fields that I have created. We have the hint for each of the edit text. The first one is the full name, second is the email and the third is the field for the password. When we move to email, we can see how the hint of the email in the edit text animates upward and changes to label. This is what the floating label is. When the user start inputting the text, it starts animating by moving to floating label position. This way, when the user enters something, he won't be confused about what field he is dealing with. In case if there was no floating label and when we had typed, for example, in case if we didn't have the floating label and we had so many text fields, in that case, it is most likely that we will be getting confused with the text fields that we are provided with. So here comes the Android material design with one more feature of floating label which provides a better user experience. Now let us move to Android Studio and start implementing the floating label in our application. So here we are. I have created a new Android project named floating label edit text. I have made few basic setups for this application. The first important step is setting the dependencies in the build.gradle file. Make sure you have these two dependencies synced with your Android project before you start implementing the floating label edit text that is provided by the Android support library. These are the support libraries that will provide the text input layout. Now moving to activity main.xml, the basic setup that I have done is, I have defined three edit text in the linear layout. The first field is for the full name, which has the ID of full name field using the attribute hint. This is the full name hint that I have provided for the edit text. For the second edit text, the ID is email field with the hint 
of email and the third edit text is for the password field with the ID of password field and the hint is password. We have given the input type for the password field as text password and then I have defined a button which has the ID of sign up button and the button text is sign up. Now let us run our basic application and see what the condition of our application is before implementing text input layout and what it will be when we implement the text input layout. So let us run it and see. Here is our application up and running. We can see these are the three edit text that we have implemented in our application. The first field for the full name with the hint as we had provided. The second for the email and the third is the password. This pink color appearing in the edit text is the ascent color. So now let us implement the text input layout in this application and see the changes for our edit text. Now here for the first edit text of the full name, let us wrap it inside the text input layout. Android support design widget, text input layout. Let us define the basic attributes of this text input layout. So here I have defined the ID for the text input layout as input layout full name. I have given its width as match parent and height as wrap content. Now let us run our application and see how the edit text inside the text input layout behaves. So here is our application up and running. We can see as the focus is on the full name edit text, the hint text has become the label for this edit text. On taking the cursor to the next edit text, we can see this hint comes back again to its place. On taking the focus again on the first edit text to give some input, again this hint animates and becomes the floating label. So now let us implement this for the rest of the two fields in our application. And then we will be validating this input for each of the fields. So here I have defined the text input layout for the email field which has the ID of the input layout email and then for the password field I have defined it as input layout password. That's all for this video guys. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned and have a good day.